So good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, it's Anthony Carpen here just outside what was one of the old Ratty and Ketz buildings as you can see and which is now the home of the Cambridge Cookery School which unfortunately seems to be closed uh, at the moment. It's a shame because actually it's, uh, it's got a very very good reputation but is also at the same time off the beaten track. Now the place that I'm sitting in used to be and for quite some time was an industrial estate but if we look around now you can see that it's quite a nice quiet neighborhood away from the bustle of the uh, of the noise of Hills Road and of the Cambridge Leisure Park and we've got some uh, some young families playing uh, just over uh, over there. Interestingly, I've just filmed a couple of videos for uh, Amanda Taylor and the Liberal Democrats. Uh, the Queen is Liberal Democrats having commissioned me to film um, a couple of local campaign videos um, for the County Council elections, which are on the 4th of May. So do look for Democracy Cambridge on Facebook to see who is standing in which areas, because I've created that Facebook page to help keep local residents here up to date on all things democracy. Now not so long ago I also made a or did a kind of a walkthrough of this neighbourhood as the these buildings around here were uh, when nearing completion and I've said you know quite often that I've not been a huge fan of the flat roofed buildings and the very blocky style of apartments um, and residential places that, uh, that, that seem to be going up. And in my most recent blog post I also wrote how we're going to be needing to retrofit a lot of the buildings that are going up because of all things climate change. And one of the things I mentioned was how, and again if I turn around here you can see a lot of the open brick face, I've basically said, well, that's actually an opportunity to build green walls. What, what green walls effectively are, are basically where you cover the walls in plants and things, amongst other things, not just to absorb carbon dioxide, but also all of the, um, the pollutants, as well as the green walls actually also been a very good noise barrier. And noise pollution is, you know, unfortunately becoming more and more of a problem, not least when you've got uh, car drivers on the, in particular on the main roads, um, more and more unfortunately of them seem to be choosing to drive cars with exceedingly noisy engines, some of which are in breach of the law. Um, but that's uh, just a, shall we say, another general moan. One of the things, um, again, now that we've got people moving into the completed flats that I'm going to be asking the City Council about is how do we get them involved in just the civic life of Cambridge? Because one of the things that I've been, been doing for quite some time now on all things the history of Cambridge is to look at the the expansion of the city over time and one of the things that I think whether it's through the Museum of Cambridge or otherwise it's worth doing is inviting the people who've moved to the city is to get their experience of what it was like moving what were the issues that they faced so for example one of the things we've uh, that I found out from Amanda earlier was that some of the restrictions on the ba uh, on the balconies of the buildings just behind us over there is that nominally they're not allowed to put uh, whole hand clothes out to dry even though they're very clearly people who are actually um, doing that and it's made me think why would any designer, builder, architect, developer or even local council officer um, and planner want to put such a restriction that micromanages how people live um, you know surely isn't there a better way of uh, you know of doing things you know on the other hand and I think this is something that um, Amanda also mentioned is that uh, the developers and the marketers are basically saying you know you don't want to have all of the balconies having lots of you know clothes racks on with drying clothes because apparently it doesn't look nice when the estate agents are going around trying to sell the place um, as you some of you may be aware this contrasts greatly with um, 
certainly my experience of growing up here where actually we had washing lines and back gardens. Obviously the density of the buildings here doesn't allow for that. Um, but it does make me wonder, kind of from a historical perspective, what future historians will think of the design of the um, of the developments that have gone up in Cambridge, really from the early 20th century up to presumably when I guess we move into the uh, the next era. I guess you could say we're moving into that era now, the one of all things fake news and post truth. But that's for a a, a completely separate video. So. One of the things that I've also been doing in all things Lost Cambridge and all things the history of Cambridge is stumbling across the various stars of really the growth of modern Cambridge and one of the things I'm going to be doing quite soon is to be shooting some more videos and short clips on the uh, on some of the less heard people I mean we haven't heard much about them uh, anyway, but uh, one of the people who I stumbled across very, very recently was the Christian preacher Elise Hopkins, who was active in the mid-1800s. And there's a whole host of things that she wrote about in her book, um, uh, Working With Working Men. And it was one of the earliest examples I can find of a woman writing about the social issues and the social questions of her time. So I'll be covering that very soon. I'll see you soon.